Hi folks, it's Keith, Victor Echo 3, Sierra Victor, Quebec. Here today with another blog looking at what you need when you start POTA. Now this blog is mainly aimed at brand new hams who just got their license and are trying to figure out you know, where they're going to spend their money. It's also aimed at older hams, some who may be in apartment buildings, may even be in you know retirement communities. They're not allowed antennas, that type of thing. It's also aimed for people like myself who have operated from their house for many, many years and then suddenly found parks on the air and we're having fun outdoors. So what are we looking at? Well, essentially there's five things that you need to, you need to get. Most you may already have, especially if you're already operating indoors. But at the same time, you need to look at your budget. What can you afford? Um, you don't want to go spending a fortune on things and then find out you don't like to do this. So you got to try and keep it simple. So let's look at what you need. Well, first off, let's decide on your operating style. Are you going to, you know, backpack into the bush and camp overnight? If you're backpacking, you don't necessarily want a, a heavy radio or lots of antennas. You may find that uh, you need something light and there's actually some very... Uh, lightweight, small, very portable radios that are now out there and relatively inexpensive and you know somewhere around 10 to 20 watts and really that's all you need and you'll see when you get into the power it makes a difference what you're using in, in so in so far as how long you can stay on the air as opposed to how far you reach out. So let's look at your operating style. Are you going to camp? Are you going to hike in? Are you going to do what I do, which is essentially drive to a park, find the parking lot, you know, set myself up and operate from there. Antenna on the roof. It's portable. It works. And on the odd occasion, if there's a nice park and it's a nice day, I, I may actually go out, grab a, a picnic bench, set up on it and put up an antenna on top of a telescoping pole. So all of these things are all possible. So look at your operating style. What will you be doing most of the time once you start? Because if you like it, then you can add all sorts of stuff as you go along. And I think one of the biggest mistakes most people make when they're looking at all these different videos of people, you know, it's, oh my goodness, I need a tent or I need a shelter or I need a 30 foot mast or whatever. No, you don't. Keep it simple. And that's the whole idea. It's something like a field day exercise. Just keep it simple. So decide on your operating style. My operating style is very simple. I have to be able to pack, drive to the park, operate, well, set up, operate, take down, and drive back, generally within four to five hours. That's sort of my maximum. That's the amount of time I can get. So there's no point in me having tents. There's no point in me having, you know, all sorts of maps and fancy antennas because they take too long to set up. I want something that I can set up in basically 15 minutes or less. And the setup I have now, that it definitely allows me to do that. So think of your operating style. Start with whatever radio you have. And yes, there's fancy radios out there. There's a lot of people with older radios, uh, you know, it's just last year that I got rid of my uh, my Kenwood TS430S. Good radio. It worked fine. I decided it was time to upgrade it. You can take that one to a, to a Poda Park. Nothing wrong with that. You can operate with that from your car. You can operate with it on a park bench. Great radio. It's not a fancy new one. Now, right now, it's an ICOM 7300. That was my upgrade. So I take that one with me. Is it perfect for hiking in? No, it's a big radio. It's heavy. And you would probably, if you're hiking, you know, 10, 15 kilometers, whatever, you may want something lighter. But it works for me. And when you start off, you use whatever you have. Try it, see if you like it. Now, as far as microphones go, well, Use the one that comes with the radio. Use the one you use every day. It doesn't have to be fancy. Now, in my case, I have a Heel Pro 6 headset. I love it. I have hearing aids. And that headset allows me to hear a lot more than if I'm just listening to a radio 
and talking into a mic. So the headset for me works and I bring that headset with me. So that's an extra piece of equipment that you probably don't need. You're obviously going to need some type of antenna. So in this case, I use a hamstick. Now hamsticks have been around for a long time. There's different companies. I use an MFJ one. It works just fine for me. Be careful where you buy them and not just MFJ, any of the ones. Big difference in price. For instance, the, uh, the one that I'll show you in a minute, that particular one, if I was to look online right now, is $230 Canadian for that little hamstick. It's $30 in the States. So when you're ordering one, keep in mind, shop around, shop your big distributors, DX Engineering, Giggy Parts, um, Ham Radio Outlet, all these different places carry this material. In Canada, I use Radio World a lot because they've been very good at supplying me with equipment and uh, answering my questions and, you know, even stuff that's back ordered. They've been fairly fast getting it to me and so on. So find a good distributor. And remember, if you're ordering from the States, try not to use FedEx. FedEx will hit you really hard when an item crosses the border. And it doesn't matter the price of the item. You can have a couple of dollar item and you're going to get dinged for well above that value. So again, shop around, be careful. So this is the antenna that I use. Now this is the hamstick I just mentioned to you. It comes basically in a container like that. It's basically <laughs> just a rod sticking up. You have at the very top here, you have a spot where you can put essentially the whip in. There's a long whip, almost the length of the antenna that comes with it. And of course it screws into a mobile mount. Now the mobile mount is entirely up to you. I'll show you that setup on the car a little bit later. I'll take one of my old clips. Another item that you're going to need, the third item really, is a battery. What type of battery? Well. The lithium ones are really the better ones. Uh, some people still use car batteries, nothing wrong with that, but they're very heavy. Uh, these lithium ones, and you, I'll show you one in a minute, it's very light, not overly expensive either. And you know, it's rechargeable. When you buy your first battery, you have to buy a special charger that comes with it. So your first battery is a little bit more expensive, but that charger will do for multiple batteries down the way. Now, lithium batteries, like everything else, you know, there's all sorts of prices out there. Um, I haven't seen a lot of reviews on several of the batteries that you might find on Amazon, as an example. Um, some of the ones, you know, there's lots of people talking batteries now. At one point, they didn't talk a lot about batteries and you had to really search. But now, a lot of the people who are doing the uh, POTA activations are talking batteries. So that's a good thing. It's just a matter of looking at them i'll show you the one i'm using which is one that you can get at cabela's either order it online or go over and pick it up whichever whichever suits you and depending on how close the store is to you now the battery that i use like i say this is the markham brute it's a 10 amp hour battery again prices vary a lot um, i've seen this same battery here and i'll show it to you in a second on amazon for 300 dollars I've seen it on Cabela's Canada because I'm in Canada for $130. So $300 Canadian on Amazon or $130 direct from Cabela. And that's with the charger, which is another $30, $40. So you take that off of the battery, you know, you're looking at something like $80 to $90 for the battery, which is a very good price. It works fine. Uh, they, you know, there are batteries that go all up, you know, 20 amp hours and so on. This one is a 10 amp hour but it does what I need it to do because I'm not sitting there for 20 hours at a time or two days at a time. I'm using it, you know, like I say, four hours or so. Works just fine. You now this is the battery I mentioned to you. This is the Brute from Cabela's. Beside it, I just put a soft drink can just so you can see the size of the battery. Very, very small, very compact and works extremely well. You do have the studs on top. Now, in my case, I use this 
arrangement here. Those are Anderson power poles. They go out all the way down. There's the clips there that would hook on to the battery. Very, very simple process. Keep in mind, though, that if you're using Anderson uh, power poles here, you're going to have to have Anderson power poles most likely on the end of your radio as well. But it's great when you can just you know, pull out, take it with you, come back, plug it back in. Much simpler than unscrewing everything all the time. You don't have to go out here at 100 watts. You know, use 20, use 50. You know, conserve battery power. And it's not going to make much difference as to who can talk to you. The other thing that you're going to need, well, you need some type of logging method. Here's mine. Just a regular sheet of paper sitting on a clipboard. And I try and get 10 into a page and it gives me an idea what I'm doing. That Now, if you are using this system, you will find that once you get home, you got to take some time and input the data into your logging system. And I don't mind doing that. That's... To me, that's all part of the experience. <laughs> Pretty simple. I don't bring an iPad with me. I don't bring a computer with me. I just use paper. And again, personal preference. A lot of people have some logging programs now. You've got the Hammers one. You've also got N3 uh, FJP, which is the one I have on my home computer. A lot of people are using them. They're comfortable doing that. I prefer, still prefer the old fashioned paper. But that's, some, no, that's a decision you make. Do you need a tuner? Well, you might. Depending on the antenna you use and depending on um, the radio you have, you may need a tuner. In my case, I don't worry about it now because I have the ICOM 7300. It has a tuner built in. So I don't need to bring that extra piece of equipment with me. This is what we're using today. It's pretty much my normal one. And that's just an MFJ 20 meter ham stick on the roof. Small car, so not a lot of metal, but it goes up quite high, as you can see. It's a nice area around here. And signals reports today were just booming in. Uh, we were having a lots of fun time, lots of clear, strong signals all over the eastern and the central states. For those of you who haven't seen the setup here, it's a pretty simple one. Uh, 7300 up on the dash and it's hooked up to a hamstick 20 meter hamstick on the roof and there's my park there's the battery which I use I absolutely love this little battery it's uh, a brute by Markham wonderful battery serves me well I've yet to have any any problems with battery issues which is always good news so there you go simple setup if you've watched these videos before you know the one I use this is pretty much my standard go-to setup and by the way, always have a checklist. Keith Beardsley, Victor Echo 3, Sierra Victor Quebec. Hope you got something out of this video. Hope you're having a great day. 73.